everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I have got an enormous number of questions in the last week about a young guy named Tristan Lee. Uh, people have asked me for my opinion. They're like, what do you think about him? What do you think? Is he natty or not? And I've never heard of the guy. So I had to spend a little bit of time researching to figure out who the heck this guy was. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skill at my craft a little bit, and let's talk about this. And I'm going to get into the good and the bad. I always think it's funny. People come to me asking me about bodybuilders, because, again, let me make this clear. I am not a bodybuilder. Now, some people are going to be like, but Jason, you do some hypertrophy training. Jason, you are relatively big. You are cutting. Isn't that bodybuilding? No, bodybuilding is a competitive endeavor, and I want nothing to do with it. Uh, it's, it's not my cup of tea. It's not really what I do other than make fun of it or make fun of the, the health risks that it carries. Uh, I'm about fitness, I'm about sports, I'm about strength sports, um, I'm about, you know, living a long, healthy, active lifestyle and being strong as hell when you're getting older, because uh, I'm about to turn 42 in like three weeks. So, that being said, um, what are my thoughts on this? You know, there's some good and there's some bad. There's good and bad. I, like I said, I had to do a little bit of digging because I'd never heard of him. Um, and, you know, when I say the bad things, some of his fans, just, he's going to have a lot of teenagers who follow this guy. They probably love him, and they probably look up to him. And you know what? That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, by all means, at least they're looking up to someone who's physically active and training. And if that can get ten teenagers in the gym and off of their Xbox, and I'm not knocking it. I have an Xbox. But, you know, I'm not knocking that. But, you know, these, these kids do need to be training. That's a good thing. So I'm not going to completely bash that aspect of it. But what I am going to say, um, he does have some really bad habits. Uh, there's a lot of things he's doing right now that I can see already are going to be problematic for him later in life because he's got caught up in this whole bodybuilder bro mindset. Um, and I definitely see some, some risk for him. Um, and I'm not saying this to, to be a hater because, I mean, how do you hate on a 16-year-old kid? Come on, you can't. They haven't lived enough life and they haven't even formed enough opinions for you to even say they're like a good or a bad person. Come on, he's 16 years old. So I'm not going to hate on the guy, but, but I do have some concerns. Now, will I applaud this young man for training? Actually getting in the gym, training hard, doing his thing? Of course I will. Uh, will I applaud him for, for being conscious of what he eats at his age when everyone else is doing otherwise? You bet I will. I will look at those two things and say, hey, that's extremely positive. Um, even if he might not be doing everything perfect, uh, I mean, I guess it beats the alternative. I mean, he could be sitting around on his ass eating Pop-Tarts and uh, Pizza Pockets. You know, he could be doing that instead, and I would say that's definitely worse. Um, but we get over to the question of the natty or not. A lot of times I would say, you know, guys, he's not really that big. A lot of guys are going to point that out, that, you know, he might look big compared to most other 16-year-olds because he actually lifts. And he'll look bigger because he's really lean, but he's not really big. Like, and you're already going to see people who don't know what they're talking about. Some of the fans are going to be like, oh, Jason, he's as big as you are. Dude, he's not even close. I can assure you I have 30 pounds of muscle, 40 pounds of muscle on this kid. All right, let's, let's not even go there. So it's not even that. It's not, he's not big, guys. He's, he's, I mean, he's carrying a reasonable amount of muscle. I mean, for a 16-year-old, he's pretty big. But for a grown man who trains really hard, he's actually not big. Or he wouldn't be big if you were to go into a serious powerlifting gym with a bunch of dudes in their 20s and 30s. He would look like a sucked up tiny little little shit. That's what he would look like. So he's not big. So you guys are like, oh, he's so jacked. You must be on gear. No, get real. Get real. He's really, really, really lean. So he probably looks big to you guys also because he's at a shorter height. You look more stacked when you're 5'5 five five, uh, than a taller guy does in isolation. You go put this guy next to a 220-pound power lifter and then come back and tell me that he's big. He's not. He's not steroid big. Uh, the concern is going to be the amount of muscle he's carrying versus that body fat on a diet that is known to cause muscle loss in every study ever done on it. All right. That's where it starts to get suspect. If you're walking around under, you know, 5%, 6% body fat year round on a keto diet, that's usually indicative of trend use, right? Every single guy we know, and I know in the industry, who promotes keto diets, who stays 10% or lower body fat year round, when you talk to them, they love trend, right? It tends to go hand in hand because you can't retain muscle long term on keto without it. 
It just doesn't work that way. Ketogenic <laughs> diets are horrific for muscle retention. And every study that's ever looked at it proves that. And everyone who's convinced it isn't just hasn't run it long enough. Or they're delusional of the fact that they're retaining muscle. Um, that's the concern. But that doesn't guarantee that he's on drugs. So that's kind of the point. Uh, he could be a genetic outlier. Again, I don't even know his stats. I don't know height and weight or anything to go with this. I don't have a fat-free mass index. I don't have anything to go off of. But he really isn't as big as people are, are kind of making it out to be. He is just really, really, really lean, which kind of comes to my biggest concern. Um, he's too lean for his age. There's, uh, 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 usually guys say, hey, you know, for guys to diet down, like what do you mean if we were too young? In other words, don't be dropping down under 10% body fat till you're at least 21 years old. And I say that because your endocrine system isn't done developing, your testes, stuff like that, are not done developing until you are like 20, 21 years old. And you start dieting down that lean, it absolutely has a negative impact on your endocrine system. We got research on this. Look at Eric Helms' doctoral work. Look at his doctoral work on natural bodybuilders and look what happens when guys get down to five or 6% body fat. Their testosterone levels and thyroid levels look like they're 70 year old men. All right, these men need a hormone replacement therapy at that point. It destroys your endocrine system. You really shouldn't be dieting down to 6% body fat. I don't care what age you are, it, it's stupid. It's harmful. So if we're gonna talk about being healthy and, and fit, being 6% body fat is not healthy or fit, it isn't. All right, and the data it pretty much shows this. It is unhealthy. Now you take a young kid like him, 15, 16 years old, dieting down that lean, even though he's doing it through sheer physical activity because his calories are pretty good from what I can tell, um, that's a concern. That's a big concern. Uh, the ketogenic diet's a big concern. I'm sorry, ketogenic diets are not healthy. And he got caught up in this idea because he's listening to bros. And, oh, it's better to burn fat than to burn carbs for what I'm doing. No, man, that's the exception. The overwhelming majority of elite athletes, even in soccer, Carb load, okay? Carbs, carbs, carbs. That is what elite athletes run on. There are outliers who get away with higher, with high fat diets to function like that, but they are not the norm. And yes, I know Dr. Jeff Volick has tried to, to make arguments to the contrary, but you need to remember he's also a dissenting voice against mainstream sports nutrition and what is actually building champions and building gold medal winners and building guys who win the NFL, super, at the, win the Super Bowl and stuff like that. I'm sorry. Um, these ultra high fat diet guys are generally not taking too many Olympic medals. All right, they're not taking medals in the Olympics. They're not winning Super Bowl games. The most elite of the elite are fueled on carbs. All right, that's a reality. I'm not saying some fat doesn't have its place, and I'm not saying there isn't some benefit to high fat phases in your diet, but it's not ideal. Not even close to ideal. It is not our body's preferred fuel source. It isn't. Um, the, but the keto diets, uh, especially starting out that young in life, it's a concern because, yeah, there can be problems that there is concern of atherosclerosis and everything. Is it going to probably affect him at his age? No. Over time, is it a problem? Yeah, it's a potential problem. Absolutely a potential problem. So it's stuff like that. And, you know, hopefully he gets out of that phase and doesn't try to stick it out for five or six years. Uh, but promoting the keto diets, promoting being that lean, that's a concern. You know, that we're falling back into the same bro stuff that I call out for people who are in their 30s, who are YouTube guys who are promoting this stuff. It's the same bullshit. So I'm not going to endorse that. Um, the other big concern is training. He has no clue what he's doing. And he's got a coach, apparently, who also is a, a goofball bodybuilding bro from the best I can tell. I don't know who it is. Um, but I watched his chest workout in his diet video, his chest workout. All right, guys. Again, this goes to show you what genetics and some consistency will do. The guy's getting some gains doing this, but you need to look at the amount of internal rotation of his shoulders happening on every single exercise he does. Doing dumbbell chest presses with the pinkies out, internal rotation of the shoulders, right? Internal rotation of the shoulders. Uh, then he's doing the same thing, incline Smith machine benches. I mean, this, his shoulders are going to be destroyed by the time he's 20, 25. If this kid continues to train the way that he is, at 25 years old, he's not going to be lifting anymore. He's going to be another one of these has-beens who says, oh, I used to lift until I tore my shoulder. Oh, I had to have both of my shoulders scoped. I mean, we all know these guys. I, Because of my age range, I meet guys like that all the time. And then I'm standing around going, dude, when you're in your 40s, you should be able to bench 300 pounds with a pause. Okay, come on. Be, be realistic here. You should be able to deadlift 500 pounds in your 40s. If 
you trained correctly and took care of yourself. That's totally reasonable. He's going to be beat up and busted up by the time he's 25. And now younger kids will listen to that and be like, well, that's a long time off. It really isn't. I'm telling you guys right now, it's about to be a 42-year-old lifter who has been in the iron game for decades, done my fair of strength sports, everything else, and is, is relatively injury-free. Relatively. Um, I can tell you 25 comes real fast. 30 comes real fast. 35 comes knocking at your door a hell of a lot faster than you think it will. And so you get into these bad habits of doing all this silly shit with the flared elbows and the internal rotation to the shoulders on all your presses and getting in a Smith machine to bench. And you're like, well, it's going to take it five years to destroy my shoulder joints. Five years happens real fast. Five years happens real fast. All right, that's a drop in the bucket. If you guys still want to be able to train 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you can't do silly shit like that. It has to go away. All right, you need to learn how to perform these exercises correctly, and that includes removing internal rotation of the shoulder joint on your pressing. All right, that's real high on your list of priorities. Uh, and that's everything I've seen him do so far is a, a variation of these exercises that is going to eventually chew up his shoulders. Uh, and he's not noticing the problems now because he's 16. When he's 25, he will. It's going to be a problem. He needs to get some better training happening there. I'm not saying it's not building muscle. It is. The problem is, is it's putting excessive wear and tear for the amount of muscle that it's building. Uh, and it is going to be a problem eventually. So those are my negative things to say. And I don't want to come across as being a total dick to a teenager because I'm really not. Because I actually applaud the fact that at his age, he has the drive to get in the gym and train consistently, that he has the drive to, to track what he eats and to try to eat what he considers to be healthy. I mean, I will give him nothing but props for that. that that's noteworthy, All right, That should be given praise. Uh, but there's definitely some things that, that are a valid concern that he needs to address and he needs to work on before he, he continues too much further down this game. If he really wants to, number one, look out for his best interest. Number two, be putting out information for other people that other people are going to look up to and follow because he may not see the negative effects for 10 years of some of these things. And then everyone who follows him, other kids his age group are going to see the same problems. And in 10 years, they're going to have the same problems. Uh, it's cause for concern. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.